All right, YouTube. Uh, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. You should know my name by now, but if you're new to the channel, uh, I'm Patrick. Uh, today, uh, we're looking at something a little different. We're actually on my desktop right now. Uh, finally got a decent capture software. Uh, so we're going to do uh, a tech talk. Uh, hopefully, I can get a couple of these in a week uh, just to catch everybody up uh, on what's going on uh, in the tech world. Uh, I've got a button on my mouse so uh, you can follow along with me uh, but we're just gonna go over a couple news articles um, it's uh, early January uh, starting this week end of the week uh, I think 6th through the 9th uh, is when uh, CES uh, comes around uh, company I work with everybody's going but me um, but that's alright I'm not not too excited uh, for CES honestly uh, I think it's gonna be uh, pretty much the same as last year I think there's going to be a lot of 4K, there's going to be a lot of 6K and 8K TVs, uh, but like the problem that we have right now with 4K, there are uh, devices out there, but there's simply no content. Um, you know, you can get upscaled stuff, uh, but really finding something that's in native 4K, uh, you got to spend another, you know, six to a thousand bucks uh, to, you know, get a specific player uh, and join a specific market. Uh, that even enables you uh, to get some content. And I've, I've experienced, uh, experimented with that uh, in my line of work, um, but unfortunately it's just it's just not there yet. So uh, a lot of uh, 8K uh, stuff and 6K. Uh, I think there's going to be some more wearables, uh, but a lot of wearables that nobody's going to use. Uh, I read an article the other day, um, I don't have it up, uh, but read another article the other day about uh, wearables uh, and you know different wearables that track your sleep and other things like that uh, but I just don't think uh, many people are in the wearables market um, now uh, I normally have a uh, Samsung Galaxy Gear smartwatch that I uh, I wear all the time uh, and a smartwatch is, is okay I think that's an acceptable wearable same with some of the fitness wearables uh, but I don't think uh, it's a product uh, that we're gonna see a lot of um, they can come to market and everything but I just don't I don't see them uh, being a feasible object uh, that people are going to crave uh, like we beg for new smartphones and other things like that so uh, let's jump into the news not so excited for CES but I'm not going so I don't I don't think it's a big deal so uh, CNN uh, in their tech section here comes the terabyte phone uh, they mentioned that um, you know over the years storage capa storage uh, capabilities I haven't really exceeded much more than uh, 64 gigs or 128 gigs uh, but now um, you got a, a company coming out that's gonna have terabyte worth of storage uh, built into their phone uh, it's some off-brand uh, company that they had mentioned here uh, we have a lot of cloud storage and other things like that if you're a uh, Microsoft um, user or Google Drive user uh, those all work uh, with cloud storage but uh, honestly I mean I have a 32 gig uh, 32 gig Samsung Galaxy S4 and I have a 64 gig card in it and I don't come close to using almost any of the storage uh, that that I use so uh, I feel like a terabyte phone is just is just overkill uh, it's just like the 4k TVs um, and curved TVs why are there curved TVs there's no science behind it there's no definitely no need to have a curved TV I don't think it's a better experience uh, it doesn't have any uh, advantages um, but I think it, the reason why they have curved TVs uh, is simply because they want you to buy another TV they don't want you to keep your same TV for you know five or ten years. They want you going out and buying a new TV, just like we go out and buy new phones every you know two years or, or so. Same thing with 4K. Everybody's buying 4K TVs. Nothing's in 4K. You'll never watch a TV show in 4K, especially if it's broadcasted. Uh, very hard to find uh, Blu-rays uh, and other movie uh, besides like downloaded, um, you know, very very large files uh, to even take advantage of that. Um, so that's that's a little disappointing, a little disappointing. Uh, but you know that's just uh, technology trying to sell you something else. So Oculus, uh, we're on to this. I'm super excited for Oculus. I've followed it for a really long time. I really wanted a DK1. Uh, I've used uh, one uh, in iRacing uh, and a couple other uh, softwares. I'm dying for a DK2, uh, but my girlfriend will kill me if I buy one uh, for 350 bucks plus. 
I like getting, I like ordering something off the internet and it being there, you know, one or two days later. The wait list is like two to four months right now, uh, so that'll that'll be painstaking. Uh, but Oculus, um, awesome, awesome product. They are many months away from uh, virtual reality sunglasses. They got virtual reality sunglasses. They'll probably take uh, take the whole uh, Google Glasses and virtual reality and meld them together. And I think uh, people are going to come after Google Glass because that had that had a little bit of popularity before that uh, glass hole stigma uh, hit that uh, market. Uh, but Oculus uh, is super awesome, uh, especially with a good pair of headphones. Uh, I think uh, Oculus and their Rift product uh, will definitely uh, be changing our lives uh, as how we do things uh, coming up in the in the next years. Uh, Twitter apparently they're working on a video platform to rival YouTube. Another one of those, you know, um, another one of those videos where it's like, yeah, okay, whatever, you know, doesn't surprise me with anything. Uh, a while back in the news, um, Yahoo was putting together a service to rival YouTube. And uh, I think it's all speculation just yet. I don't think uh, anybody is going to rival YouTube uh, anytime soon. I think YouTube uh, and Google are going to have to make some really, really big mistakes uh, to, to be dethroned uh, in the uh, market there. So Gizmodo, what did I have up here? Uh, another good website to check. Um, websites that I check, uh, you might be able to see some of my uh, tabs. Uh, up here, I've got lots of them. Uh, ones that I check daily in terms of news are Google News, uh, NPR, Engadget, Gawker, Lifehacker, Gizmodo, New York Times, uh, CNN, um, TechCrunch occasionally. So uh, a couple of them there. So I don't think there was anything on that page. Uh, along with the whole Oculus Rift thing, uh, this is a new uh, company called Neo, and they have this uh, personal 3D sound capable uh, headset that comes with a little bit of software, uh, pretty well made uh, headphones really uh, from some of their uh, designs and uh, I, I'm probably pretty impressed uh, with it. Construction looks really really solid uh, but has um, works with a 3D la uh, sound labs company uh, and they do uh, personal 3D sound systems that are capable of reproducing sound, uh, surround sound for any movie. Um, so you might download a movie or something like that uh, and it only has stereo sound, and I guess this uh, has a lot of technology uh, to fill in uh, all the gaps pretty well. Now, uh, the Logitech uh, G930 headphones uh, that are my daily driver, uh, did a review on those. Make sure you go check those out. Uh, awesome uh, pair of headphones. couple caveats to that, but we'll get to that when I do a later review. Uh, it has Dolby Digital built in, uh, and it does the same thing. Uh, really creates a pretty nice 3D sound field for you uh, w when you toggle the uh, Dolby Digital button on this here. Uh, and with that, I mean, audio engineers uh, in video games uh, are getting pretty popular now, and I think uh, you can really build some uh, pretty amazing 3D soundscapes uh, with the right audio engineers, and that mixed with the uh, awesome power of the uh, Oculus here, I think that's going to really shake up uh, how we do things. Um, TechCrunch, kind of, um, as I mentioned before, they talk about uh, CES. Everybody tells me CES is a mess. I think it is a mess. I think there are a lot of major manufacturers that are out there. Um, but a lot of little guys too. There's a lot of little companies that you'll never ever hear of, but they all go to CES. Uh, CES has you know massive spaces, um, and you know you have the big uh, companies out there like AMD and Intel and Samsung uh, and the phone manufacturers and Apple uh, that might be showcasing some new products. Uh, but a lot of stuff has been uh, released uh, early. Uh, just a couple weeks ago, LG, uh, for example, the monitor that I have, they released a gaming version of that, 34-inch uh, gaming-specific uh, monitor, a whole new uh, series that came out. Uh, a couple other companies, um, Galaxy S6, uh, if you're a Galaxy user, more rumors are coming out about that. Apparently leaked uh, images and renderings and other things like that. So I think uh, the luster of CES uh, is really down uh, this year because it's just really no major breakthrough. I mean, last year... 
you had the 4K and 8K TVs, you had wearables, but I, I'm I'm skeptical as to what what they'll bring to the table this year. I don't see anything. I really don't see anything new. I haven't really heard anything yet. Uh, so I do think it'll be a mess. But you have all these little companies there uh, that you never really hear of, um, and uh, I, I think just the the diversity between uh, booth to booth uh, is going to be really really interesting. But hopefully they can pick out uh, some interesting uh, small startup companies. Uh, as people are going around uh, to try and, you know, impress me, uh, some startup companies that we might need to watch. I know a ton of people going, like every other tech channel is going. Obviously, this is not a huge tech channel. I would love to go, uh, even though I'm not overly excited about it, uh, but I definitely wouldn't pass up the opportunity to go. Uh, so hopefully, um, everybody else will keep you tuned in to CES coverage live from CES. I'll probably uh, regurgitate what the internet gives me uh, and try to uh, put my own twist on it uh, later in the week once we get some some real concrete news as to what's going on in CES. Uh, and then our last uh, article today uh, is about the O-Box. And the O-Box uh, is kind of interesting. kind of reminds me of Ouya. Uh, we did our, our review on Ouya not too long ago. Uh, that video has been pretty popular on the channel. Uh, so make sure you go see that. Uh, if you don't own one yet, 99 bucks. It is fantastic. Uh, anyway, Obox uh, is uh, kind of like Ouya. Uh, Snail uh, is the Chinese gaming company uh, that uh, is interested in this Android-based console. And uh, they're really into um, getting Android onto your TV and uh, taking that smart TV uh, a step further. Um, o box, I kind of see the controller here, standard uh, design like we're used to, kind of a mix of a 360 controller. Uh, everything's in the uh, usual places. Uh, but the specs on this uh, were pretty impressive. Um, it also does 3D, uh, so this, this is not just a screwy image up here. Uh, this is a 3D enabled game uh, on the Android market that you can get, uh, plus uh, with a pair of 3D glasses that they got down here. Uh, next to like some beer or something. That must be a fun time. They're drinking beer wherever they are doing that. Um, so 3D glasses to uh, pair with your uh, O-Box. And I think uh, that that could be really interesting. Um, Android gaming uh, is okay. Obviously, it's uh, nothing to compete with um, Xbox 360 or anything like that. It's definitely not a major console. Um, but I think uh, Android gaming uh, is really evolving. Asphalt games, some of the modern combat, uh, first-person shooter games, they're, they're not bad. I mean, graphics are getting much, much better. Uh, our phones are definitely catching up to uh, what our desktops can do. Maybe not in terms of uh, GPU performance, but, you know, you've got new phones out. Uh, Nexus 6, for example, 3 gigs of RAM. You've got quad-core processors overseas, uh, and hopefully starting uh, after CES, we're going to start getting into octa-core processors. Um, so not exactly the same uh, as a... Uh, custom-built gaming PC or anything like that, uh, but I think there's going to slowly start to blur the line between, um, you know, what kind of specs are in our phone and what kind of specs uh, are in our PCs. Uh, so that'll be that'll be interesting, and I think the Android gaming market uh, is definitely growing. Uh, there's definitely uh, a place for that, uh, and I think Obox um, and some of the other consoles uh, that have failed to launch might be able to fill that gap. So I, I have high hopes for Obox. I know Mad Cats came out with a Android console that kind of flopped. Ouya's had a little bit of a flop, uh, but somehow they're still sold out uh, all over the place. Um, and then Amazon Fire TV uh, is halfway decent, but definitely uh, nowhere near the market share of uh, PlayStation or Xbox or some of those other uh, manufacturers. So let's get into the specs. That's kind of what it looks like, a very Xbox uh, looking controller. This is the console over here. I don't think it's meant to stand up in this orientation. And I also think it has a disk drive. Like um, over here, I felt like uh, this was kind of a disk uh, drive down there. Uh, so maybe they, maybe it has like you know built-in Blu-ray or something like that. You can you can play some games. Uh, so small gaming box uses the Nvidia K1, which is pretty good. Uh, we're all uh, fans of Nvidia uh, when it comes to. Um, mobile gaming platform. Four gigs of RAM is impressive. I like that. Four gigs of flash storage. Eh, not so impressed with that. I'd like, you know, to see like maybe 16 gigs of flash storage. Uh, and a hard drive bay. I assume they don't include a uh, hard drive uh, so that you can do larger amounts uh, of storage. I have a uh, product coming up, by the way, a uh, old G-Box Midnight. 
GBox uh, makes some awesome, awesome uh, Android mini PCs, especially uh, for XBMC uh, and other platforms like that. And the GBox, uh, one, one of the reasons why it used to be my favorite um, media box, it's not anymore because specs are kind of uh, out of the way, uh, and it was one of the early products, is it had a spot for a 2.5 inch uh, hard drive. You could slap one of those in there, load it up with your movies or something like that, put it in there, it automatically gets configured by XBMC or whatever uh, Android based uh, media playback software you're using, and bam, you are, you're ready to go. Uh, if this has spots for that, uh, and you can put, you know, uh, 500 gig or 250, or obviously it's it's Android games, so they're not massive, uh, but you'll you can get a couple games out there that are, you know, gig, two gigs, uh, maybe even even into the three gig range. So I'm glad that uh, people are starting to include uh, that. So there's at least two versions of the O box. One features a 2.2 gigahertz. Uh, in te uh, Tegra K1 and the other has a 2 gigahertz processor. Both are 32-bit ARM chips, which is okay. Uh, obviously, 32-bit, we know we're not going to be able to use all of that uh, RAM that's allotted unless it's a 64-bit processor, which it's not, uh, but that's okay. The rest can go to uh, GPU. And then you have uh, NVIDIA Kepler graphics, uh, which is, is very, very fine. Supports uh, H256 uh, uh, compression, which is good, 4K video, that's wonderful. 802.11 AC uh, dual band Wi-Fi, very nice to see that. So the specs list uh, is pretty darn good. No gigabit Ethernet, eh, but it's not a deal breaker for me. Two USB 2.0 ports, always good. One USB 3.0 port, awesome. Three HDMI ports, now that's kind of interesting. Uh, three HDMI ports, obviously that doesn't mean I can connect to three TVs. I think those are inputs. Uh, and that means I could plug maybe a cable box uh, or a Blu-ray player or a Roku or something like that into it uh, and loop pass that through uh, the O box uh, into my TV and uh, use that, uh, especially because it has uh, SPDIF, uh, digital optical, and 5.1 channel audio. It comes with a wireless game controller uh, with buttons and motion controls, so I'm I'm kind of impressed. Uh, I, I do have some high hopes for this. Uh, the company Snail, uh, the Chinese company that uh, uh, makes this, they don't have a website. I've looked. Uh, they don't really know what, what they're going to do with or, or, you know, it says they hasn't, hasn't said how much it'll cost or when and where uh, it will be available, uh, but I definitely uh, would be interested in picking one up uh, if it ever does uh, come stateside. Uh, so controller looks pretty good. Box looks pretty good. Uh, I definitely like uh, kind of the textured surfaces uh, that we can see uh, up there. That's pretty interesting. Box looks pretty good. Uh, you get a little glimpse of the back. We got uh, some USB ports, our three HDMI's, uh, SPDIF, uh, audio ins and outs, power. It looks pretty basic. Uh, definitely looks pretty good uh, in terms of cooling and other things like that. So I'm pretty impressed with that does have uh, room apparently for 2.5 and 3.5 drives. A little glimpse of the board, that's kind of nice. Uh, that's kind of the, uh, the overall look of it. So I'm pretty excited for that. Hopefully uh, we'll get some more information uh, after that, after uh, CES or something like that. So that's, that's definitely something I'm gonna uh, keep an eye on. Uh, so that's, that's about it for uh, today's Tech Talk. Uh, like the video if you like it, dislike it if you dislike it. If you have any uh, suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. Oh, this is the first Tech Talk, uh, so I know it's probably not going to be perfect. Uh, I'm still new to this uh, capture software, so if there are any bugs, I'll do my best to uh, work them out. Hopefully uh, my picture down here in the bottom is not too big. Um, my monitor uh, is a 34-inch ultra-wide, so uh, when we're browsing, I, I tend to get out of the way because not too many... Uh, web pages support uh, my resolution natively. Uh, so uh, thanks for joining us. I know this is getting a, to be a pretty long video, video uh, but we will see you next time, guys. Thank you.